So, it is my pleasure to introduce y'all to our next speaker, who is our party chair, Anderson Clayton. She's a North Carolina native. If y'all didn't read the Washington Post article, I'll give you a couple highlights, but it's a good article. She's a North Carolina native. She's from Person County. Um, don't hold being out from out east against her because she went to App State for school. So she's I went to App State for poli sci and journalism. Um, she has been a county chair in her county. She's been president of the County Chairs Association. Uh, she has really hit the ground running hard in the, what is it, seven weeks? It's, yeah, seven weeks since she's been elected state party chair. So if y'all are seeing her in the media all over the place, she's done all of that in seven weeks, which is absolutely amazing. And um, I want to let bring you a let you hear from Anderson. Um, she cares really deeply about local and rural elections, which is why she's getting out all across the state. She cares deeply about running everywhere, running candidates everywhere. That includes places where people don't think Democrats can win. Um, so you're gonna hear a lot about that. Um, she is part of the answer to how do we get more young people involved in politics. And I'm really excited to be able to introduce her and bring her up to, to speak to y'all. So Anderson Clayton, party chair, come on up. adjust that back. Wow. Thanks y'all. Um, the standing ovation. Didn't expect that one, to be honest with you. Um, I just want to say thank you so much to, to Max and to Jeff for uh, inviting me to here today. I am equally amazed that there's this many people out on a Saturday uh, morning when the rain looks like it does outside and the weather looks like it does outside. So the first thing I just want to tell you all so much is thank you. Um, I think that every, or the way I like to start off every time I give a, a talk like this is just saying, you know, Time is the most precious thing that we have. And if the last three years of a pandemic showed us nothing, it should have showed us that. And, and I think that, you know, you're choosing to do something here today that not a lot of other people are choosing to do with their time. And you're choosing to put it into Democrats. And, and in a really early capacity this Saturday morning, you're choosing to do that. So I've got a lot of appreciation that y'all came out to hear me talk today. Um, and for the folks in this room right now, Jeff Rose really being one of them. Um, at, yeah. I remember being a first time party chair and Jeff had already been this kind of person who everybody went to for answers for things. And he, he, he did, you know, anybody that would call him, that would email him, that would text him. And I'm like, you got a whole county out there that you're handling. And then you've also got 99 others that you're trying to handle while also running data for the state party somehow too. And I just feel like Jeff kind of takes off one hat every single day and then puts on a different one and then just keeps trucking. Um, so I've got a lot of respect for the workhorses of our party rather than the show horses of our party sometimes. So once again, another round of applause for Jeff Rose. Um, I want to give a big thank you to our two county commissioners that are here today. Uh, Commissioner Moore, uh, I'm really excited to see you get elected. Uh, the only the only county commissioner flip right in the state this last cycle. Deserves some claps. It also deserves some concerns um, <laughs> on my part of things. And so what we are coming for this year is making sure that we are organizing locally and, and getting more folks elected. Commissioner Whiteside, thank you for being here too this morning. Uh, I got to meet uh, the good old... Uh, Honestly, famous, I feel like for me, Register of D's, uh, Drew Reisinger. I have been a fan of this man for a long time, especially as an Obama organizer. Uh, that campaign, I think, had one of the best operations that I've ever seen throughout the state of North Carolina, at least when people talk about it, right? Um, I was really young when that happened, but I'm like, the idea and what it built and the, the capacity of it and how people still dream and talk about, well, back when Obama ran for president, this was happening here, and organizers were on the ground here, and that energy was just everywhere, Anderson. Um, and that's what we're trying to inject into our party again. We're trying to make Make people find that energy. Um, I was honestly sitting here like tearing up at Representative Ager talking about what's going on in our General Assembly right now because it's heavy. And it's something that right now the Democratic Party is trying to figure out how do we explain, how do we educate, how do we get people to pay attention to what's going on in Raleigh? Because if you're not angry, you're not paying attention. But let me tell you what, North Carolina ain't paying attention right now, y'all, and they can't afford to. There's a lot of things that are happening in people's lives when you're talking about, you know, can I feed my family every day? Can I make sure that I'm gonna be able to pay my rent this month? Can I get through paying my, my broadband bill that is you know, $99 a, a month for internet access right now in a county? I mean, the, the things that people are struggling with and people are dealing with, and they're not able necessarily to think about what's happening in my legislature every single day. And that's the job of the people in this room right now. That's the job of the Democratic Party right now. And that's why you see me right now taking seven weeks and trying to run at it with everything that I have, because I feel the urgency of this. Um, 
we did a little heat map when I got elected to this role of kind of who helped me get here. And I want to give a really big shout out to Buncombe County, uh, because not only are y'all the leaders in the state when it comes to being, you know, our progressive blue beacon of light in some capacities, but uh, you also were the ones that helped get a, a 25 year old party chair in this role. Yeah. It's because of Buncombe County that this happened and that this is a reality. And so when people tell me, well, the party doesn't believe in young people or young people are not able to do something. And I'm like, no, no, no. We're going to show people this year that they can and that they're able to take on responsibility and leadership roles and that we're going to build this party up with a multiracial and, and multi-generational coalition of people that are going to come together and fight for North Carolinians this cycle. We're not fighting culture wars. We're fighting class wars in North Carolina this year. And that's a reality for everybody across our state. Raise your hand in the room if you're a precinct chair. Anybody? Any of them? Oh, my gosh. My soldiers. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything that y'all do. My unpaid laborers. Uh, also, Jeff Rose being one of those folks. And, and Barrett right here being on the board. And also Dana right here being on the board. Um, I just want to say thank y'all. The work that you all do is so hard. And especially after this last cycle, it was uh, especially difficult, I think, with us seeing the fall of Roe and what's going on nationally and, and just the divisiveness of politics. But coming together and saying, no, I'm going to bring my neighbor to my meeting. I'm going to try to go out and corral folks in my community to get together and say, we need to do this. We've got to get some, we got to get people to the polls. And how are we going to figure that out together? And so I've got a lot of respect for the precinct chairs in this room, folks that have taken on that leadership opportunity in their communities to make a difference in their neighborhoods in Buncombe County. So thank you all so much for the work that you do. Um, my background is in rural organizing. And so, uh, as Jeff said, I'm from Person County. That's about an hour north of Raleigh. It's around 40,000 people in the entire county around 9,000 in the actual city population of Roxboro. Um, in 2021, Roxboro flipped the city council from red to blue. It was the first time we had ever had Democrats be represented on the city council, and all three of my Democrats were Black Democrats in Roxboro. And it was amazing. Yeah. Might deserve claps, might also not sometimes, I think. Because I'm like, that shouldn't have just, it shouldn't have happened in 2021. It should have happened a lot sooner than that. And the reality of Person County is that 51% of the city of Roxboro is black. And when I talk about rural organizing, I'm talking about places that we have left behind in North Carolina when it comes to our own people. Folks ask me all the time, they're like, Anderson, how do you talk to rural voters? And I'm like, no. <laughs> how do you talk to rural Democrats? Do that one first, and then let's try to do the other one second. How about it? Because we got people in our own party right now that haven't heard from us, that don't know what the Democrats stand for, that haven't felt our message because we don't have organized county parties in Northeastern North Carolina right now, and they need our help. And that's where the state party this year, the priorities that we're bringing is infrastructure building. I'm taking the lead from my national Democratic Party, and I'm saying we want to build strong county party chairs in every county. We want to make sure we have the Jeff Roses across the, across the state, not just in Buncombe. And while y'all are lucky for it, we also want to share that wealth with everybody else, to be honest. So um, we really want to prioritize trained precinct chairs trained precinct chairs, trained county party chairs, trained district chairs, because we understand that our volunteer base is the biggest power that this party has. And y'all feeling energized and bought in into what we're doing, I want to make sure your end user experience with this party this year is the best one possible, because that's what's going to draw people back every single time. And we need to energize our base. We need to bring people back to this party, but we also need to bring people to it, folks that haven't been involved with it before. And I'm talking about unaffiliated voters. People look at me all the time, and they're like, Anderson, how are you going to handle unaffiliated? And I'm like, how am I going to handle them? I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to reach out to them. You know, the, the reason that folks are unaffiliating at such a massive level right now is because they don't see themselves in our party. They don't believe that they like the divisiveness of politics is hard. And it's even hard for folks in this room to write to deal with, right? Like we just want to see people's lives be better. We just want to see shit get done at the end of the day, to be honest. Excuse my language for kids in the room, um, if there are any. Uh, I heard a child here earlier and I was like, oh gosh. Um, but I just want to say, you know, the the ideas that we have and the policies and, and what Representative Ager said earlier about the Democrats that we have in our state house and our state Senate right now are phenomenal. And the ideas they have are phenomenal ideas for our state. And we've got to get more Democrats elected, which means we've got to contest every state house seat this cycle, every state Senate seat this cycle. We've got to be everywhere. And that's in 2024, but Battleground 2024 starts in Battleground 2023, everybody. <laughs> uh, it starts with us taking back municipal races that we should have right now. I was in Union County two weeks ago, and that's where that Washington Post article came out of, because Union County's got three municipalities, Indian Trail, Starlings, and Monroe, and I want them all in 2023, y'all. Like, that is my thing. 
Um, so we're hosting organizing meetings and we're trying to get out to counties where we have real democratic ability and potential and flips and possibilities because people need to see that Democrats can win. We're tired of losing y'all. I'm tired of losing. And I don't believe we have to. I think it is because of the fact that we haven't had the energy and the motivation and the mobilization of people on the ground, folks that know their communities the best to do this work. So I'm trying to recruit folks from across North Carolina to run for office this year, young people especially. We're going to partner with a group called Run for Something, if y'all have heard of them nationally. I'm hoping to bring them into North Carolina to recruit more young people to run for municipal elections, but also have statewide seats this next cycle. The Democratic Party is really invested in it because we left 44 seats uncontested this cycle. And when we did that, right, people looked at me and they said, well, Anderson, you know, lambs out to slaughter, right? Like you can't expect people to do it. And I'm like, no, those are my champions. Like you're championing the democratic message this year. If you're running in a district where you know we may not win that district, but I never say never. I'll be honest with all of y'all. I got a lot of hope and I didn't expect to win three city council races when we did. It was because I really cared about Person County, and I believe that Democrats in that county deserve to have somebody else to vote for besides the Republicans. I want to make people run for office, y'all. They don't just deserve to come in there every time and win it. We got to put up a fight. We lose every race we don't contest, and that is our problem in this party sometimes, too. And the number one thing, I, and I don't have the problem in this room right now, like Buncombe County, I feel like y'all have really invested in local infrastructure and local building. But across our state right now, that's what we've got to do. We've got to get back with these city council races and county commissioner races, our register of deeds. We've got to build these, these seats at the local level to build our bench back up in our party. And y'all hear me talking about it. It ain't a two-year process, y'all. It's a 10-year rebuild of our party. Because in 2030, when we draw maps, the Democratic Party is going to have a seat at that table. We're not going through redistricting like we did this last cycle again. That's not happening in our state. And I want everyone in this room to take that, take that charge and understand it this year because we've got to fight on our hands like none other. And you heard it from Representative Ager over there when he's talking about what's going on in our General Assembly every day. I tell people, I'm like, y'all don't understand. North Carolina has not been living under a Republican legislature. We really haven't. We've been living under a protected Governor Cooper's veto power. Yeah. And I'll be honest with y'all, most of this state, doesn't understand that they haven't felt the effects of what it looks like to be florida right now but we could if we're not careful this cycle if we're not strategic this cycle if we're not motivated to give every last inch of what we've got this cycle and we are and we're prepared to and so I'm going to hit every single county. I'm going to make sure that my candidates are out there across the state this year. We're not giving up on anybody. We're going door to door. And I'm fighting for not just Republicans, independents, unaffiliated voters. I'm fighting for my Democrats, too, because y'all's votes also deserve to be fought for in this election. And I want y'all to know that. I don't take anybody in this room, your time, your energy, your ability sitting right here today for granted. I never will. This party never will again. So thank you for what you do. Um, I've got some business cards right here, my cell phone number on them. If you want one, I'd happy to give it to you. Um, and, and I'm going to hang around afterwards. I'm also going to take any questions, maybe, if I've got time, Jeff Rose. I don't know if we do, but maybe. Okay, Max. Um, and take some questions. But I just want to say thank you all so much. We're going to organize everywhere in 2023 and 2024 for the North Carolina Democratic Party. And I'm so excited to have the backing and support of so many of you in this room, uh, but also so many of you across the state. I felt like I've seen this party come to life over the last two months almost, and I'm so excited to continue to do that, continue to rile people up, get people angry, get people educated, get people mobilized in every capacity, everywhere. Um, you know, I tell people, I'm like, there's a whole hell of a lot more Cantons than there are Charlottes in the world, and I'm going to all of them this year. We're going to try to find them. So thank you all so much, and happy to answer some questions. I believe that there may be time for a few questions if Anderson's willing. I think she still has energy. I'm not sure. So. I see, uh, I saw the uh, woman in pink first. Hi, uh, I'm precinct chair for 71.1 and we have a lot of young Dems in our precinct and I have been trying my best to get them involved and they're not, they're not coming out. What would you suggest I do? I would suggest you find another young person to ask them to come out. I'll be honest with y'all, like young people need to organize young people. That's one of our problems this last cycle is that we have, and, and, and that's just, and that's being straight up, right? Like 
I really do believe that we have got to get more young people involved with the actual organizing process and really teaching them how to go out and organize their own people. And there are a lot of young folks sitting in this room right now that might be willing to help you out with that and maybe say, hey, come, let's have an organizing meeting. Like, let's go meet up at the local like coffee shop for, for a Saturday afternoon. And also, I'm happy to hop on a Zoom call with them at any point in time if they just want to meet the state party chair that's 25 years old. Hey, yeah. that's fun. I'm also happy to come back out to Buncombe County and do it in person, like a little meeting with them too. Hey, um, my name is Katie Dean, and oh my God, hey Katie, nice wow. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Can't know each other from Instagram. Uh, we've been chatting. Uh, my question is about think tanks and how it revolves around, particularly rural messaging. And I'm going to lay out just a quick scenario. I work in water design, infrastructure, process design for water plants, wastewater plants throughout the southeast. Uh, Henderson County is not a client of mine, but they've got. Uh, school that has an antiquated septic system that is failing and so they have an all republican county commission that is already laid out a development plan to develop the apple valley in henderson county and I, i'm sure that folks in this room understand the severity of how it will completely change the physical and economic landscape and culture of of the county and they they already have maps and site plans drawn to develop roadways through the Apple Valley based on a sewer main. And the reason that they're proposing the sewer rate right now is to serve a school to take care of the kids. Hmm. While they have kind of a longer standing uh, master plan, if you will, for economic corporate economic development in Henderson County. And so I'm concerned, um, yeah. I, and I know that there's a lot. I have a lot of friends who are working in nonprofits uh, to contest <laughs> what's happening, and their approach is through land use, and um, they've been encouraged to sue over the Clean Water Act as well. And I think that infrastructure, economic, local ec economic development, and and where it intersects our infrastructure is a pressing issue at the local level, from county to county, especially outside of our urban, you know, in the rural counties throughout our district and NC-11 particularly, um, what do you propose we do in terms of putting together think tanks to communicate the message, yeah. to fully understand the severity of it, and then that we're connecting with the people that are on the ground with the nonprofits or former electeds who are fighting their current party on, on what's happening? And I know that's a lot of work, uh, a lot of words to just ask a broad question about like, how do we move forward and, and integrate that strategically over the ten, over the next 10 years? Yeah, I hope by finding volunteers like you, Katie, who are willing to help educate people about it. And, and no, like, and genuinely, because I'm like, the, the whole thing that I've seen, and Ashley Ward is a great example of it. She's someone that ran for Congress in NCO4 with the Nidalam, Valerie Pushy race and all of that good jazz. Um, but she's a climate scientist. And she came to me and she said, we need to help edge, like teach rural people and like rural Democrats how to talk about solar panels. She said, because like solar moratoriums are going up across rural North Carolina right now. That's one in person county. And like when you've got a five person Republican board of county commissioners right now, what the hell are you going to do? Like to some degree. But I'm like, you can go to those meetings. You can fight about it. You can let people know about it. And I think that part of what we've got to do is, a, is over that 10 years is help like formulate an education plan. And also, how do we talk about the money that's coming down from the bipartisan infrastructure bill right now and the American Rescue Plan as places where people can go and say, and we're arming Democrats right now. Something that I think is really amazing that Joe Biden and this administration has done is actually given rural Democrats the opportunity to go and hold local elected officials accountable. For the first time in our careers, we actually, or our lifetimes, I think we, in the last 40 years, actually this is the first time we've ever seen historic investments in rural communities from an administration and a rural and like being able to look at rural counties and saying hey we believe you have a future 50 years from now and we're trying to think about it and i think that and, and i'm honestly blanking right now and who was up here earlier talking about thinking about the future and it was eric oh my god okay thank you i was like wait a minute i'm literally repeating it back to myself but thinking about like democrats are and, and that's hard to get people to do i think because people are focused on tomorrow but somebody's got to be focused on the future and that's got to be our party and and so however i like ideas katie that you have for that that you want to bring into it that the party can do and the structure to that i'm happy to talk about to be honest with everybody in this room right now though the party's a little bit staff uh, strapped capacity wise. Um, we are going through an executive director search at this moment in time. We're going through a finance director search, a, a political director search, and also um, our organizing and training director, Julia Buckner, is on medical leave, just to be honest. Um, so we have some 
things. Uh, the house is being kind of held together with a little bit of band-aids. And I feel like the if y'all have seen the Incredibles movie at all, Elastigirl, I really feel like I am um, stretching out right now and holding tight to everything that we got uh, just to keep it in line. But like, I, I want to be able, once we get an ED on the ground to like actually be able to develop, what does a 10 year strategy look like? Because I think in my brain, I have it. And like the judges have it. Honestly, we invited all of the Supreme court justices, uh, justice Morgan and justice Earls, and then all of the court of appeals judges into Goodwin house recently, they were talking about like, what does 2028 look like? I want to be able to bring all of those plans in together too, because messaging is a part of that. And being able to say that, like, we have something like we did in 2018, that was a Carolina promise, right? That a, a platform that we can run on as a party that says, here's how we're going to stand up for. But I think our first job as a party is making sure that folks are getting to those local meetings, that they know what's going on in city council meetings and county commissioner meetings across their state uh, or across their county, that they're also getting the economic development commission meetings, because those are where a lot of these decisions are being made. And they're happening at 4 p.m. on a Wednesday afternoon. And honestly, it's a bunch of old people. Not, and no offense to that. No offense to that. It is a bunch of like older folks though in the county that are not looking at young people in it and being like, how do you want to come up in this? And then also they're like business owners sometimes who've just been there for a while. I'm like, it's it's a very interesting place, the EDCs that I have been in, like that I have interacted with in rural communities across North Carolina recently. Yeah, no, exactly. No, exactly. And that is my problem is like, and it's the same thing with talking about like getting people elected to the general assembly right now. I tell people all the time, I'm like, Republicans don't want working class people in office. They're paying, they can, ha they can change it tomorrow. They're paying people $13,000 a year to go to Raleigh. If you're living in Haywood County and you're making a six hour drive, like what? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. And it's hard on people. And I'm like, that is also a big thing that we have to educate people on is like working people are being kept out of positions of power in our state. Like that is a huge problem that we have. But I go back to that and I'm just like, one thing that we are going to help people do this year is going around and actually knowing. So I was um, talking with some folks the other day about getting the numbers per county about how much American Rescue Plan dollars that they got, infrastructure money that they got, and then per municipality too. And being able to give that out to county chairs and saying, go arm your Democrats with some knowledge <laughs> and then go have them go to these meetings and be like, where's my money going? I want to see it right now <laughs> um, because they should be able to. And, they, and that's like something that's a right that people have across all of these rural counties that are maybe doing R plus 20 counties right now and that are not necessarily seeing the strides and the opportunity that Buncombe County is, but they can still be going and holding elected officials accountable. So we'll talk more though, Katie. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I actually have a question for you, Anderson. I love it, uh, Fair Fellows, Third Vice Chair uh, for Buncombe Dems and Chair of 26-1. Um, you mentioned that we are looking for a lot of new staff at the state party level, um, including an executive director. And I'm wondering, like, as you do that search, uh, as someone who's worked for the state party and, and you know, worked uh, at the county level for a while now, what are you looking for in an executive director this year? Yeah. Um, so I am, as y'all can tell, I provide a lot of energy. <laughs> uh, I got a lot of ideas. Um, the structure to some of that, though, I think is what I'm missing. I, I really believe that I want an executive director that's going to come in and be a partner to me that wants to see. I've got a transition director right now. Her name's Lainey. And she looks at me and she says, Anderson, being with you is like trying to put lightning in a bottle. And I said, yes. And I need someone that can do that really well as an executive director as well. Um, but someone that also has national level connections and experiences that the DNC, the DGA, I want all of the national investment that North Carolina should be guaranteed this year. And that means I need somebody in that role. Yes, Jeff Rose, clap for that one, would you? <laughs> um, but that means having somebody in that role that national um, figureheads and also people within the national party are aware of and also conscious of and know who they are potentially from other things that they've done. The good news is we closed executive director applications um, on Thursday, I want to say, or maybe. Um, it, no, it was 22nd. I'm just kidding. The 22nd of this month, um, we had 55 applicants and we have some really, really strong applicants out of that pool. So um Barring no complications with those folks, hopefully getting down here. And a lot of those folks are potentially living in D.C. They are from North Carolina, though. That was my big hope is trying to get somebody that has North Carolina connections, but that is at the national level right now. And um, we have a lot, if y'all did not know, a lot of North Carolinians that are in other states. And I'm just like, y'all need to come on home. <laughs> I'm calling you this cycle. <laughs> Uh, it kind of like a little come home North Carolina tour that I'm on right now, because one thing and I bear and I were like talking about this a little bit earlier. One thing that the state party does not have, honestly, is a great reputation for how we've treated staff in the past. It's a reality. It's a really, really big reality, something that I'm kind of sitting with and faced with when I'm trying to recruit talent back to North Carolina. So a lot of what I've done is try to go around and build relationships, talk to folks about, you know, the fact we have a union contract that's in place until 2025 and we plan to respect that contract. We plan to have more people under that contract this year.
Um, we are trying to make sure that, you know, we're reaching out. I had a great meeting with the um, AFL-CIO, the SEIU. We're trying to meet with them soon, trying to make sure that unions in this state know that the state party is behind them and supporting them. And that we know that, you know, while we may be number one in business, we are number 49, I think, in workers' rights in the, in, in the country. So um, making sure that we remember that and that we know that um, and reaching out to folks and talking to them about, you know, what was the Democratic Party's role in that to some degree? And, and what do we have to come back from for it? And I think that that's a huge responsibility, too. So. Sorry, that's a tangent about executive director that I've been on, but systems thinker, somebody that also really respects the uh, volunteers on the ground and people that are doing things for this party. Like I said, I care a lot about an end user's experience. I had a lot of people in 2024, and, and or, or not 2024, my goodness, but in 2022 that I think that walked away from the party feeling like they would never come back to it again because of how that experience was for them. Um, that's not what I'm trying to have happen this cycle, genuinely. Thank you. Yeah. I, I'm also on the CWG board, so thank you for saying you'll respect the union contract. I just want to say real quick that the day that we elected our new state officers, I went online and started recurring contracts.